Hello. This is going to be a quick video about these motors and what to do if you somehow break one of them, how you can recover them. So these motors are quite small and they're made by a company called Steadywind in China and I have a few of them lying around. This one is the GEM 6108 which stands for Gear in Motor 6108. Um, I think 60 and 10 have to do with the dimensions of the actuator itself and then 8 is for the reduction, um, the gear ratio. Um, so yeah, you can see that these ones are have similar sizes, um, these two I mean, but these ones are a bit different. But actually, under the hood, there is the same driver board driving both of these motors. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if you have this one or this one, the same method for recovering or unbreaking these motors should be the exactly exactly the same one. All right. So without further ado, let's jump in. I'm going to put these ones aside, um, and we're going to start by opening up the cover, the case covering the electronics board. And so I've already done that. You just need to remove four of these screws holding the the case and here you can see well I've already removed it so you can see the the motor driver board the board has a few uh, pins that we can tap into and what we're interested is in the SWD interface pins here so these four pins one is for the input output the other one is for the ground the other one is for the clock and the other one is for the three volt and what we're gonna do is use a programmer something like this uh, this is a Daplink programmer and I've already have the the wires connected to it and as you can see is the exact same thing 3 volt SWD clock and ground and now what we're gonna have to do is connect this USB-C to a Windows laptop and then I'm gonna take these pins and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert them in the correct order on the pins of the motor driver board Now just a note here on this step, um, because I'm using these pins that are quite long and if I push them all the way down they're gonna short via the case. So make sure you hold them um, on the pins. I mean ideally you could solder them if you want to but because this is not something permanent what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna hold them like this make sure, making sure that they're not touching the case and then I'm gonna tilt them and put a bit of pressure to make sure that the contacts um, on the on the pads are solid. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now we're gonna go over to the laptop. Okay, so now you should be able to see my computer screen and what I've done here is that I've connected the four pins to the SWD interface and I've connected those pins via wires to the DAPLINK uh, device. Then the DAPLINK is connected via USB-C uh, to my laptop and you could do it directly but I'm using a USB isolator here just because I have it ready for using the actual motors when I'm controlling them via the USB-C uh, cable. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna start the this software tool you can get it from their website and it's called Nations MCU Download Tool and the problem here is that so what, what we're actually trying to solve is if you just plug in via the USB-C interface Windows would not pick the motor up. Uh, I tried even going to the device manager and see if the list of devices would change when I plug it in and unplug it, but nothing would show up. Uh, and so I, I just assumed that I somehow must have bricked the motor when I was trying to upgrade uh, the firmware. And so in order to solve this, we're going to use this kind of uh, programmer device, the DAPLINK, to, to help us out. And we're going to do that by tapping into the four pins directly. Uh, so now, if you open this software, you see the by default the USB option is selected here on this drop-down menu. That's because you would usually use the USB-C cable when it is usually picked up, so when it's not bricked to update the firmware. But here we're gonna want to change it to SWD, and you could use a a J-Link device, but I'm gonna use this one DAP for the DAP device. Now you could change the um, uh, transmission speed, but I'm gonna leave it at one megahertz. And then um, 
nothing is currently showing up because I haven't plugged anything in but I'm now gonna plug in the USB-C isolator um, and as you can see now we have an option under this drop down menu so what we're gonna do next is uh, to actually flash it so uh, I'm not really sure what this option is I must not have the correct Chinese font installed on Windows for it to render the, the, the font but it doesn't matter just leave it as is also leave the address as is uh, now click this button to select the firmware that you want to flash I'm gonna choose um, th version hardware version 3.10 and firmware version 0516 and this is where you must know a bit your motor the motor that you have purchased just to make sure you take note of which for uh, which which hardware version it comes with so this is related to the uh, driver board itself so I know that for this motor it uses hardware version 3.10 so I'm going to select the latest firmware 0.5.16 for that hardware I'm gonna double click that and I'm gonna click this button to start flashing oh uh, okay this is an error saying we are not connected to the device because I forgot to click this button here to establish the connection so this is when uh, it's the right time to apply a fair bit of pressure on these pins to have a solid connection if you have not soldered the pins. So I'm going to click this button, establish connection, it has read the information here from the board and now I'm going to try clicking this button again for flashing the firmware and the log saying that it has started to flash and now you can see the progress bar here at the bottom uh, progressing towards the end as we are flashing the firmware. Okay, so as you can see here, unfortunately, the flashing process has failed and uh, that's that's fine. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I might have moved the pins a bit while it was flashing, so I'm just going to disconnect from the device. Wait a bit. It says it uh, probably cannot close the connection. So I think it gave me an error, or maybe it's just saying that it has successfully closed it. So now I can click this button again. It's going to try and establish a connection. It could not, so I'm going to just close the software and unplug the USB. Start the software again. Plug in the USB. SDW, DAP, 1 MHz the device, establish connection on this button then again click this button to select the firmware I want 3.10 and firmware version 0.5.16 start flashing, let's try this again and it has failed again so what I'm gonna do again this time what I'm going to try instead is to flash it at a slower transmission speed I'm gonna connect the USB again start the software again and now this time try with 500 kilohertz establish the connection select the firmware again and try flash
Okay, it seems we're making some progress now and it has not failed yet, so this seems promising. Um, I don't really blame them, it's really my fault for not soldering these pins and just relying on a pressure connection to do this flashing of the firmware. But uh, there we go, we have the success message. So I'm going to close the software and unplug the device now. And now we can remove the pins. Just for good measure, stick them on this helipin to keep the, the correct order of the pins, just in case I need to tap once again into the STW interface. Okay, but we can proceed. I'm going to remove the disconnect the DAP link device from the USB-C cable. I'm going to connect the USB-C cable directly to the USB-C port of the motor driver. And I'm going to get the uh, wires for power. And these also should have the can high and can low, but I've somehow managed to pull them off. So I'm just going to insert that connector here for power. Um, and now I'm going to turn on my power supply, which is off camera, but it's set to 30 volt and 6 amperes. So I'm going to turn that on now. Okay, so you can hear the fans of the power supply. And you can also see the blue LED indicator here, indicating that the motor is receiving power. And what I'm going to go and do now is plug in the USB-C cable onto the laptop. And before um, this flashing the firmware in this way, this motor is, was bricked and it wouldn't be recognized. But one way to check everything is working now is to open the Steady Wind Motor Wizard. And there we go. I'm already quite happy to see that we are getting the live data coming from the motor. Uh, so that is a really good sign. It means that everything has worked. Uh, if we want to check the details, uh, to really go and check everything is correct, we can click this uh, parameters button and here in the configurations tab um, we can see that the hardware version is 3.10 and the firmware we've just installed is version 5, 0.5.16. Um, we can check the other parameters as well, for example, the pole pairs is set 14, correct, gear ratio 8, correct, uh, max current is set to 60, I'm going to change it to 30. Uh, then it already shows up as the encoder being calibrated, uh, which is good, but if it showed up as not being calibrated, you just need to press this calibrate button, and then what happens is that the output shaft would start spinning slowly one way, and then change direction, and then after a few seconds it will stop, and calibration should complete successfully. Um, then, okay, the only thing that I can see that is not correct, and I know from the specs to be 0 0.37, is the torque constant. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that, oh, not to this value, but to 0 0.47. Okay, uh, so now if we go back, uh, we're still getting the live data from the motor, so I'm going to turn this around um, carefully not to press or not to touch any of the power connections and I'm gonna start the motor on the software I can hear the motor starting even though it's not moving and now I'm gonna try to spin it and there we go it's working really well so we have recovered the bricked uh, motor and we can change directions or make it spin quickly There, overcurrent, start again, overcurrent again, it's a pretty powerful little motor, really good. Alright, I think it's a good time to wrap it there, so hope this video helped you and yeah, give these motors a try if you haven't. Alright, take care. Bye.